Imperial Guard is an immense fighting force, the greatest army the galaxy has ever seen, and its soldiers are the bright hammer of the Emperor, bringing his divine wrath to the heretics, Xenos, and traitors that hide their foulness in the dark places. To carry out his holy task, each guardsman has access to some of the finest weapons and equipment that humanity has to offer. And in this Departmento Munitorum approved educational broadcast, we will take a closer look at the blessed war gear of the Astra Militarum. This broadcast will limit itself to the basic operation of these weapons, leaving the understanding of these instruments of wrath to the priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Remember, each of these weapons is more than simply a gun, a tool to be used to kill. They are holy artifacts that fulfill their promise of existence by allowing each and every guardsman the chance to kill the enemies of mankind. Never underestimate the importance of that factor, for to do so is to forget the sacred duty of all citizens of the Imperium. The first thing that a new guardsman should learn is the weaponry of the Imperium has largely been standardized thanks to the foresight of the Emperor and the Adeptus Mechanicus in ages past. However, you may notice some small variations in the weapons that are issued to you and your comrades. Fear not, all weapons of the Emperor are made equal whether they come from a local manufactorum or one of the blessed forge worlds of the Adeptus Mechanicus. In any case, these fine instruments of war will always carry out their primary purpose when operated correctly, to crush and purge the Xenos and Heretic alike. The Laz Gun, or Laz Rifle, is the standard weapon of the Imperial Guard and the most popular weapon amongst a great many human forces throughout the galaxy. It fires an explosive energy blast with a similar effect to a bullet or small shell. A LAS gun may not be the most effective weapon in the galaxy, but it is easy to manufacture and maintain, and very reliable even under the toughest battlefield conditions. The weapon is very robust and can survive even the most violent mistreatment those soldiers are to be reprimanded for using their weapon in any manner other than the approved manner by the Departmento Munitorum. With the attachment of a bayonet, a lasgun becomes a formidable close combat weapon, and every guardsman is expected to train regularly in bayonet drill. Most lasguns operate in the 19 megathule range, as this has been proven through live fire testing to provide the optimum balance between lethality and energy efficiency. Though Lasguns are manufactured throughout the Imperium, there are some more famous and well-known patterns, such as the Cantrell Short Pattern used by the Cadian Shock Troops. The Lasgun can be fired on two settings, Single Shot and Full Auto. Firing Single Shot is more accurate and provides more shots, but in some cases, for example during an assault or defensive action against a more numerous foe, Full Auto may be employed when marksmanship is irrelevant. The Lasgun is powered by rechargeable power packs, but carries a residual supply and can be recharged using its own solar converters. When in base, there will be designated power chargers, which may be used to recharge each guardsman's power packs, and it is his responsibility to ensure that he keeps a full load as possible at all times. The enemy may strike at any time, and it is every soldier's duty to be ready. Though the Lasgun is by no means the most powerful weapon in the galaxy, its detractors should note that it is by far the most widespread. Such a thing could not happen were it a poor weapon, and any weapon deployed in enough numbers is a thing to be feared. Thus, it is the perfect weapon for the soldiers of the Imperial Guard, for mass numbers is exactly where the Guard excels. In addition to the redoubtable Lasgun's many variants, there are certain types of weapon that exhibit differences enough to be considered separate weapons. One such is the Sniper Variant Lasgun, also known as the Long Laz. Such weapons are only ever issued to those guardsmen who have displayed a flair for marksmanship, stealth operations and scout movement, for such weapons are difficult to produce and require more training and intelligence to utilize properly. A long lad is a modified standard pattern lasgun with an XC52-3 strength and barrel, 
which is both longer and thinner than the usual model. The strength and barrel allows for increased range and greater accuracy. The rifle does not have a charge setting slider, instead employing a specialized ammunition known as a hotshot. A hotshot is a high power energy clip with liquid metal batteries that fires fewer blasts. A clip is good for about 20 shots, but it compensates with a greater lethality index. Due to the increased power of the shot, the stress on the barrel is considerable, and due to the result of metal fatigue, a sniper needs to replace the barrel with greater frequency than he would a standard pattern lasgum. A long flash depressor fitted to the gun muzzle ensures that the telltale flashes of his shots do not betray the sniper's position, though standard practice is to relocate after each and every shot. The long last variant is quieter than a standard pattern lasgum, which also works in the shooter's favor. The ammunition for nearly all LAS weaponry comes from power packs. Fortunately for the Imperial Guard, laser technology is reliable and easy to maintain and replicate. Though the shots fired are not as powerful as the weapons of the Adeptus Astartes, they are certainly the most trustworthy. Used conservatively, a laser power pack will last for many shots, typically around 150 and can be recharged from a standard power source or by exposing its thermal cells to heat or light. In an emergency, placing it in a fire can recharge a pack, though such treatment tends to drastically shorten the useful life of the pack and increase the possibility of it failing. Recharging power packs in this way regularly will eventually result in it exploding, and such willful destruction of Departmento Munitorum property will result in severe penalties being leveled at any guardsman caught doing this. Many experienced guardsmen prefer the lasgun over more powerful weapons for these very reasons. The las pistol is a smaller version of the las gun and enjoys the same reputation for ease of manufacture and convenience of use. It is issued as the standard sidearm of the Imperium and fires distinctive bursts of energy, which like those of the LAS gun, explode when they hit their target. Because the laser's energy is rapidly dispersed into the atmosphere, the lethal range of a LAS pistol is nowhere near as great as that of a LAS gun. LAS pistols make excellent close combat accoutrements and combined with a sword allow an infantryman to fight with great vigor in the hurly-burly of close quarter battle. Unlike the LAS gun, the LAS pistol does not have multiple fire settings and operates strictly on a single shot mode. Its power pack fits snugly into the pistol grip and due to its reduced size compared to a LAS gun, it fires consequently less shots. Most magazines carry enough charge for around 80 shots before they require recharging, though soldiers employing a LAS pistol should be aware that the shots fired towards the end of a power pack's life will, in all likelihood, not be as lethal as the preceding ones. Like most LAS weapons, there exists much variation in LAS pistol design, but all perform in the same way, though many officers carry exquisitely adorned LAS pistols that are priceless heirlooms and have gone to war with generations of their family. The smoothbore combat shotgun fires a massive low velocity shot, which fragments in flight into a multitude of lethal pieces of spinning metal or plastic. Though the weapon has only a short range, it is exceptionally dangerous against unarmored targets. Combat shotguns have magazines of shells and are reloaded by means of a pump action. They are strongly made, simple weapons, which makes them ideally suited to brave guardsmen who are soon to launch a close range assault or troops of limited intelligence. A special feature of the shotgun is its ability to fire different kinds of shells, including solid shells and loose scatter shot, making them ideal weapons for close quarter fighting where the experience of putting a foe down is more important than accuracy. Shotguns are often employed by the Navy armsmen aboard Imperial vessels. Since their low velocity rounds are unlikely to pierce the hull of a starship and are ideal for repelling boarders. For this reason, Imperial Guardsmen should familiarize themselves with the operation of shotguns, as they will often be called to defend a ship when in transit between war zones. Though shotguns are impressively noisy when fired, they are unlikely to penetrate the armor of anything stronger than flak or its equivalent, and should only be employed in situations where their advantages outweigh their considerable disadvantages. Against foes without armor or that scare easily, a shotgun is a desirable weapon, 
but in most other cases, a guardsman should rely on his trusty LAS gun when in a combat situation. The Ogryn Ripper gun is a drum-fed automatic combat shotgun originally developed by the Imperium for issue to Ogryn unit leaders, but now it is generally issued to all such oversized abhumans. When a Ripper gun is fired, it unleashes a hail of shot in a deafening burst that rips its target apart. At short range, the fusillade of fragments produced by the weapon is so dense that the Ogryn cannot miss. These weapons are of suitably large dimensions and must be constructed as solidly as possible, for Ogryns have a tendency to use their weapons as clubs when in the thick of the fighting. Due to such creatures' limited intelligence, the weapon's trigger mechanism incorporates a burst limiter that prevents the fire from shooting off the entire drum at once. Such a cacophony of sound appeals to the simple mind of an Ogryn and entertains them immensely on the occasions when the limiter fails to operate properly. Without the limiter, the Ogryn units would very quickly find themselves without ammunition, though even without bullets, an Ogryn armed with a solid lump of metal is not a foe to be taken lightly. Ripper guns have been designed within the constraints of an Ogryn's modest intelligence and limitless enthusiasm to be utterly lethal at close range, but are of limited use beyond that. The weapons have only a short range due to the fact that an Ogryn's instincts are for close quarter fighting. Few would feel inclined to shoot at a distant target, even if they carried weapons capable of doing so. Most often recruited from feral worlds, Rough Riders are frontier soldiers who often ride into battle on the backs of horses or some other manner of steed. They are much valued by many regiments as scouts and foragers, though the power of a thunderous cavalry charge should not be underestimated, for Rough Riders often employ explosive hunting lances that are capable of tearing through even the plate armour of the Adeptus Astartes. The lance is tipped with an explosive charge which blows apart on impact to shatter armour and melt flesh alike. The hunting lance is essentially a one-shot weapon, and one that, if it fails to kill its target, often leaves the wielder out on a limb as they struggle to free a close combat weapon. However, such concerns are generally unwarranted, as the great skill of these riders means that very little ever survives their first charge. Though some see Rough Riders as a remnant of a culture long gone, few can doubt the effectiveness of their weapons, and though the charge and subsequent destruction of their weapons contravenes departmental immunity and regulations, Rough Riders are exempt from this regulation under Article 7739-93C as are demo charge troops. Stormtroopers of the Imperial Guard are trained and equipped to much higher standards than normal infantrymen and thus they are trusted with rarer and more specialized equipment than would normally be the case. To these exceptional men are given more advanced LAS guns, known as Hell Guns. Such weapons are the trademark of the Stormtroopers, and fire more intense shots than the more commonly available weapon. Though not as powerful as the hotshot power packs of the Long LAS, the power cells of a Hell Gun allow for more rapid firing, and can be switched between single shot and full auto. Since Stormtroopers often undertake the most dangerous missions, it is fitting that they should be equipped with the best weapons available in large quantities. Though the actual power of the laser bolt fired is comparable to that of a normal lasgum, its penetrative power is far greater, and it can punch through layered armors with ease. Though all Imperial Guardsmen represent the finest fighting men of their home world, it is a fact that some men excel in combat where others merely provide meat and bone. Such harsh realities often arouse the ire of ordinary guardsmen, leading to units of stormtroopers earning such unflattering nicknames as glory boys and toy soldiers. Such terms are contrary to departmento munitorum regulations and encourage the growth of disunity in the soldiers of the guard. Any soldier caught using such terminology shall be reported to their regimental commissar. Like its smaller cousin, the Laz Pistol, a Hell Pistol is simply a smaller version of a Hell Gun. It has a comparable range to the Laz Pistol, but its power packs have a much smaller shot capacity, typically averaging around 40 to 50 shots, depending on the age and condition of the power pack. Many Hell Pistols are crafted by hand, rather than stamped out in a forged temple, and many have glorious histories 
going back centuries. As might be expected, these are weapons typically owned by officers, though some particularly famous or lauded Stormtrooper sergeant may have been awarded his Hell Pistol as a mark of some great heroic action. Such things are of course exceptionally rare, and most Hell Pistols remain the property of the Departmento Munitorum, unless specified under Article 57332-534F. The bolt gun is most commonly recognized as the standard weapon of the Adeptus Astartes, and though it is not unknown for certain high-ranking officers to bear such advanced and powerful weaponry, it is incredibly rare. Bolters are more effective weapons than the standard pattern lasgum, and are able to punch through most forms of armor with little or no effort. They are, however, much more complex and generally only ever carried by stocky individuals of great strength, given that they are incredibly heavy and generate enormous recoil when they fire what is essentially a miniature missile. The explosive rounds fired by bolters are of a much larger caliber than normal bullets and are sheathed in an armor-piercing tip with a mass reactive detonator. Though fired at a relatively low velocity, the bolt's own propellant soon accelerates the round once clear of the barrel. The mass reactive detonator reacts to any sudden increase in local mass and activates the explosive charge, literally blowing the target apart from within. Such weapons have an extremely loud rapport and create very gory entry and exit wounds in their targets, which invariably do not survive the trauma of the shot, and thus are perfectly suited to the shock assault role filled by Space Marines. A bolter can fire a single shot, a four round burst or fully automatic fire, though without bionic augmentation, it is not recommended that anyone other than Space Marines fire anything other than the single shot setting. Like most weapons in the Imperium, there are many variants. Bolters are designed to be augmented and can be equipped with a wide variety of modifications, such as optical scopes, combat blades, or even combined with other weapons, such as melter guns, plasma guns, or flamers. The bolt pistol is a smaller version of the bolt gun and fires exactly the same form of explosive bolt missile. Senior officers or seasoned veterans of the Imperial Guard sometimes carry bolt pistols, and it is a great honor to do so, for only specialized temple forges on Mars or Space Marine home worlds have the capacity to craft such advanced weaponry. A Guardsman is most likely to see a bolt pistol being carried by commissars of the Departmento Munitorum, for employment in the field of battle and for sanctioned executions. The magazine of a standard bolt pistol is capable of housing between 6 and 10 rounds of ammunition. The shells fired by a bolt pistol are identical to that of a bolter, and rounds may be freely exchanged between the two weapons without fear of jamming. Bolt pistols are rarely used in isolation, and are most commonly employed with a close combat weapon by assault units of Space Marines. Only the bravest officers of the Imperial Guard, known for leading their men into the thick of fighting, carry such weapons. The presence of such an inspiring weapon in the hands of a courageous officer is an example certain to inspire great feats of valor. Each Guardsman is issued with six fragmentation grenades, often referred to as frags, which are the Imperial Guard's standard anti-personnel device. They are designed to be thrown at the enemy, whereupon they will explode and destroy their targets with bursts of flying shrapnel. The body of a fragmentation grenade is made of steel, and to cause additional injury, the interior of the grenade may also include small metal ball bearings to further ensure a crippling wound. In addition to the standard frag grenades, some elite troops may be issued with crack grenades or melter bombs. The former are designed to crack open armor targets, but must be placed with greater care upon their target as the effective range of a crack is much less than of a frag. Melter bombs are designed to literally melt their way through even the toughest armor, though they are bulky and not easy to mount on a target. Only the bravest guardsmen carry melter bombs, as they require a soldier to close with some of the most dangerous foes of the Imperium to use effectively. All soldiers who get the chance to volunteer for such duties should take the opportunity to do so. 
Though every guardsman is expected to be proficient in marksmanship with a variety of different weapons, it will sometimes be necessary to fight in close combat with the enemy. Though the butt of a lasgun makes for an effective club, it is not the most lethal of weapons. As such, each guardsman is issued with a standard pattern barrel-mounted bayonet for close quarter fighting. Many of these bayonets are of a design common to a regiment's homeworld, resulting in some quite fearsome blades, notably those from Katachamp, a world that appears to revel in the viciousness of its blades. Though some regiments disdain the employment of bayonets, the Departmento Munitorm recommends that all commanders drill their soldiers thoroughly in their usage, as training to kill with the blade increases a guardsman's aggressiveness. The standard issue bayonet has a matte finished, non reflective blade that is approximately 25 centimeters long and 3 centimeters wide. A sharp point and serrations near the handle help penetrate body armor, and even a moderately powerful thrust will penetrate a flak jacket. The essence of bayonet fighting is to spring forward from a crouching position to thrust the blade into the torso of an enemy warrior. Other acceptable techniques include slashing an enemy diagonally from shoulder to hip bone, or nearest Xenos equivalent, and pushing aside his weapon with the edge of the bayonet. Edged weapons are also known to be particularly useful for controlling prisoners, if any are designed for interrogation, or stabbing enemies to check whether they are alive or dead, instances where a guardsman power pack is depleted, or where he is so close to the enemy that firing his last gun is impossible. Having seen the manifold small arms available to the heroic soldier of the Imperial Guard, it is clear that he carries with him a fearsome arsenal with which to kill his foes. However, there are some vile Xenos creatures or enemies who employ despicable tactics or war machines that are beyond even the righteous smiting of the weapons of a guardsman. But such eventualities have been foreseen by the Departmento Munitorum, and thus weapons of much greater potency are available to the Imperial Guard. Such weapons are comparatively rare and precious, and therefore cannot be allowed into the care of a single man. Imperial Guard heavy weapons are crewed by a team of two men. Generally speaking, one crewman carries and fires the weapon, while the other carries and loads the ammunition. The first soldier is therefore referred to as the firer, while the second is known as the loader. Only soldiers who display a particular interest in the biggest guns or those who have an obvious affinity with the operation of such firearms are permitted to use these weapons. When likely candidates are identified, they are gathered into smaller squads to train them to be effective fire support units. These men are tasked with providing effective support to their more lightly armed brethren, paying particular attention to mass infantry formations if armed with heavy caliber sustained fire weapons, or enemy armor units if armed with weapons of sufficient power to destroy such things. Such a task is exceptionally rewarding, though extremely dangerous, and the average life expectancy of such soldiers has led them to acquiring the nickname of the Ten Minuters. In general, there are three types of support squad. Fire support squads are equipped with weapons designed to support a general advance, such as heavy bolters, flamers, or auto cannons. These weapons can kill a great many enemy warriors in a short space of time, facilitating the advancement of the Imperial Guard through the holes in enemy positions thus created. In emergencies, the heavy bolter and auto cannon can be used to engage enemy vehicles, but this is a tactic of last resort, and such targets should be left to the anti tank support squads. However, light scout vehicles can be engaged with a high probability of a kill shot. Anti tank squads are held further back from the main line of advance and are primarily tasked with engaging enemy armor units. The weapons carried by these squads are missile launchers and las cannons, ordnance designed to punch through the armored skins of tanks and xenos creatures, too large and powerful for infantry weapons to deal with. These soldiers are vital to the success of an Imperial Guard army, as even a single tank or large creature that remains intact can shatter a company without the means to effectively destroy it. Mortar support squads are held even further back than anti-tank support squads, and use their weapons to engage enemy units in the rear echelons of the opposing force. The weight of suppressive fire that can be laid down by a mortar platoon can pin enemy units in place under ferocious bombardment, allowing the brave soldiers of the Imperial Guard to advance in safety to destroy them. Nowhere is safe from the relentless fire of the mortar, for even targets beyond sight can be engaged, provided there is reliable targeting information. 
Though these units are often stationed at the rear of a formation, it should not be thought of as safer, as mortar platoons are often the first to be attacked if the enemy should flank a position. As a result, most mortar crewmen are trained to a high degree in brutal close quarter fighting techniques. But now we will take a closer look at the heavy weapons of these support platoons. As always, we will confine our interest to those patterns of weapon most commonly employed by the Imperial Guard, unless academic thoroughness demands a tangential diversion. The mortar fires an explosive shell on a high arcing trajectory so that it flies over the heads of nearby troops and crashes down into the rear ranks of the enemy with a devastating explosion. Mortars are popular weapons in the guard because they are simple to construct and more reliable than some more sophisticated weapons. The mortar has a standard two-man crew, and while it is not always the most accurate weapon, the size of the area covered by the explosive ordnance it fires means that this is generally not a problem. Mortars are exceptionally useful for laying down curtains of fire from behind a safe position. The crew can remain out of sight of the enemy whilst pelting them with fire. Once the weapon team has established the range to a stationary target, it will be able to land shots much more accurately. Mortars rely on accurate targeting information to be truly effective, and every soldier must be proficient in the proper box protocols for calling down fire support. Failure to comply with standard box protocols can result in support fire being denied or misdirected by the commander of the mortar support platoon. While instances of friendly troops being shelled by mortar platoons is impossible, and all claims to the contrary should be addressed to regimental commissars, it is not unknown for the enemy to disrupt support orders, and thus all care must be taken when requesting support fire that the orders are processed calmly and thoroughly. Being under fire is no excuse for lax box discipline. An autocannon is an automatic self-loading cannon that fires a high-velocity hail of solid shells at a great distance. They are rapid-fire weapons that can lay down a burst of fire to cover advancing troops or strafe enemy-held positions. These weapons are considered ideally suited for attacking enemy vehicles and fortifications from long ranges. They lack the heavy punch of a large cannon, but can fire more shots and are less prone to overheating, though the need to carry large amounts of ammunition is a distinct disadvantage. Auto cannon shells once contained an explosive charge similar to that of a bolt round, only larger. Though the means of producing this charge has been lost, and now the rounds fired by an autocannon are less powerful than they once were. However, autocannon are still more than capable of eliminating heavily armoured infantry or light vehicles, and are employed by Imperial Guard fire support weapon teams due to their versatility and reliability. Though autocannon are designed to be fired from a standard pattern bipod with steel glacis, in extreme situations, it is not unknown for some of the stronger soldiers to carry them into battle slung from suspensor harnesses. However, this gung-ho method of firing is unusual and not to be encouraged. The heavy stubber is a tried and tested friend of the guardsmen, and it has stood the test of time to become the Imperium's most common long-range anti-personnel weapon. This weapon is based on an extremely old design, making it too heavy to be carried manually and is thus most commonly mounted on Imperial Guard vehicles. In this capacity, it serves as either an additional crew served weapon or for closer defense when the much rarer storm bolters are unavailable. In penetrative power, the heavy bolter has superseded it as an infantry weapon, but it has survived in use thanks to its ubiquitousness and reliability. Affectionately known as Big Stubbers, the Heavy Stubber has an extremely high rate of fire, which goes some way to making up for its inability to pierce armour much thicker than flak. Heavy Stubbers are extremely effective when deployed against mass formations of lightly armoured or unarmoured foes. It is also an ideal support weapon for worlds of a lower tech level that might otherwise struggle to maintain laser weapons through technological or resource limitations. Unfortunately, due to how commonplace this weapon is and its relative ease to manufacture, the Heavy Stubber is a weapon that has passed into the hands of many Imperial civilians and ad hoc militias, rendering it a favoured weapon of insurgents and other troublesome factions. Though most of these Stubbers are poorly maintained and tend to jam often, Thanks to the users not knowing the correct Departmento Munitorum approved cleaning rituals or the misapplication of sacred unguents, care should be taken by guardsmen when approaching an enemy bearing such a weapon. 
The Heavy Bolter is a larger version of the standard bolt gun and is primarily designated as a support weapon to be fielded in fire support squads. Though several Imperial Guard tanks, such as the Lehman Rust, have heavy bolters in fixed mount upon their hulls as anti-personnel weapons. A heavy bolter fires a shell that contains a more powerful propellant and explosive charge than the normal bolter, rendering its recoil too great for any but a space marine to fire without the use of a bipod and wheel-mounted recoil suppressor. The bulk of heavy bolters employed by the Imperial Guard are operated by two crewmen as standard, and even with recoil suppressors, the guardsmen who have to carry such weapons often nickname them backbreakers or bruisers. This is in part due to their great weight, but also because of the terrible punishment they deal out to the enemy. The Heavy Bolter is used to support more lightly equipped troops, and though its primary role is anti-personnel, it also has the capacity to destroy lightly armoured vehicles. Despite being large and cumbersome, it is very fast firing and efficient, and thus it will remain in service for many years to come. Like all bolt weapons, it makes a loud and impressive noise as it is fired, especially when its bolt missiles hit their target and explode, making it a popular weapon with those guardsmen who do not have to carry it. The use of a melter gun requires a great deal of courage, as they are weapons with only a very short range, and the targets they are most suited to destroying are often the most hideously dangerous. Infantrymen selected to bear a melter gun have already proven their courage, and most will have served for some time in the front line, earning medals of valorous conduct. Given the effects of a melter gun, some guardsmen have given them the nicknames of cookers or vape guns. There are two main variants of the melter gun, but both work on broadly the same principle. The Mars pattern melter gun works by submolecular thermal agitation of the target, which literally cooks melts or otherwise vaporize it in spectacular fashion. The Esteban 7 pattern works by producing a small-scale fusion reaction using a pyrum slash promethium fuel mix. This is projected as a blast of incredible heat that can burn through almost anything imaginable, though the power of the blast is greater if the firer can close the range to the target. There is little a melter gun cannot destroy, be it plasteel or heavy chitinous armor and its effects upon living tissue are impressive to say the least. The weapon has only a short range, so it is used for close assault and support. The melter gun makes almost no noise when it fires, but the superheating of the air produces a distinctive hiss that becomes a roaring blast as the body moisture of living targets vaporizes explosively. To bear a plasma gun in battle is a great honor, for these are extremely rare weapons and are capable of immense destruction. The energy coils of a plasma gun use magnetic fields to accelerate bright, glowing bolts of plasma towards the target at extremely high speed. When a plasma bolt hits its target, tremendous levels of heat and energy are released, which destroys targets with an almighty explosion. A target hit by a plasma bolt suffers the dual effects of searing heat and explosive shock as its substance is instantly energized into boiling plasma. Only the very bravest and most capable guardsmen are permitted to fire these weapons, for an unskilled operator can cause an uncontrolled plasma buildup which can be powerful enough to cause fatal injuries. The technology to create more reliable plasma guns, if such ever existed, has been forgotten over time, but such powerful weapons still find regular use throughout the armies of the Imperium due to their incredible stopping power and ability to make a mockery of even the thickest armor. Plasma weapons require careful maintenance and must be returned to a certified tech priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus at the end of every engagement, whether they have been fired or not. Despite such issues, the Departmento Munitorum has deemed a small degree of risk acceptable when considered in light of the damage they can wreak upon the enemy. A common weapon amongst Imperial Guard infantry squads is the grenade launcher, a weapon that launches a grenade a greater distance and with more accuracy than a guardsman could throw it. Capable of a relatively high rate of fire, these grenade launchers are primarily designed for suppressive fire and to destroy light vehicles and buildings. The most common pattern of grenade launcher is the Cadian pattern, which is a drum-fed, man-portable weapon that fires 40mm grenades that more resemble smaller versions of the ammunition fired by missile launchers. 
A grenade launcher is capable of firing both crack and frag grenades, though neither are as powerful as the rounds fired by the aforementioned missile launcher. The firer simply selects which he wishes to fire via a selection switch by the pistol grip handle. The Cadian pattern grenade launcher can carry a load of 20 grenades and pivots forward to allow reloading. To aim the weapon, the guardsman flips up a rear sight, which is notched for different ranges, and matches this up with the weapon's front quadrant sight. When preparing to pull the trigger, a guardsman must first brace himself with a wide leg stance, as the recoil from grenade launchers is significant, comparable to that of a bolt gun, and recoil injuries are a common occurrence amongst guardsmen unfamiliar with the weapon's power. The most common sniper rifle in the Imperial Guard arsenal is the Needle Sniper, commonly employed by rattling squads of abhumans. The Long Laz, as explained earlier, is also a popular sniper weapon, though its need for constant maintenance and high power makes it unpopular with the diminutive rattlings. The Long Laz is seen as an elite weapon amongst the sniper community, whereas the Needle Sniper rifle is looked down upon by the best marksmen perhaps unfairly, as being a weapon that requires almost no training or skill in order to hit the target. The Needle Sniper Rifle fires a small dart tipped with a deadly neurotoxin chemical, which is held in a specially marked magazine. A specialized telescopic sight affords the sniper unerring accuracy, allowing him to pick out the target's weak points, be it a chink in his armor or patch of exposed flesh. If the target is armored, the beam automatically pulses when the rifle is fired, punching a tiny hole which allows the toxic dart to penetrate. The chemical dart is guided to its target by a tightly focused energy beam, which in the case of non-organic targets is what causes the damage rather than the toxin. Though the chances of causing any damage are slight, some snipers have been able to destroy vehicles as heavily armored as Rhino APCs, by delivering a perfectly aimed shot through a vision slit or into the eye of a driver. The use of sniper rifles, while a perfectly valid means of killing the enemy, is not recommended when the glory of a frontal assault presents itself. When Imperial Guard assault units are called upon to attack built-up areas of urban terrain or thickly forested regions where enemy units cowardly attempt to make use of cover, commanders should ensure that their flamer units are to the fore. These weapons project an ignited stream of Promethium over a wide area, bathing multiple enemies in an inextinguishable burning gel. Flamers are usually deployed in fire support squads, but if commanders deem it necessary, infantry squads may also be issued with them. In most cases, a flamer is given to the most fearless member of a squad, as it is claimed by the cowardly that enemy snipers often target flamer units and that they are notoriously vulnerable to explosions should they be damaged. Some guardsmen may exhibit a reluctance to carry flamers, but any cowardice such as this should be dealt with as a matter of urgency. By the same token, any soldier who displays a particular relish in carrying a flame unit or insists that his targets say hello to Mr. Yellow should be watched for any signs of latent psychosis, as a propensity to start fires is a warning sign of much worse to come. Some regiments, like those from Katachan, make frequent and exceptional use of flamers, the flora and fauna of the homeworld making such skills basic needs rather than specializations. And if such units are available to a commander, then he should seek to employ them in the front line of actions, where the use of a flamer would be desirable. The Laz Cannon is one of the most ubiquitous anti-tank weapons of the Imperial Guard, and is deployed most commonly in anti-tank support squads. The Laz Cannon is designed to knock out armoured vehicles, and it is so effective in this role that it is often known as the Tank Buster. Operating the same basic laser principles as the smaller LAS gun, the lasing chamber of a LAS cannon is much larger and the power build consequently heavier than that of a LAS gun. When it fires, the blast of a LAS cannon is a single blast rather than a hail of lower intensity LAS blasts. Its incredible power and ability to pierce virtually any armor make it a formidable weapon. Las cannons are very heavy and consume a phenomenal amount of energy, hence they are usually installed on main battle tanks or sentinels. However, 
Two-man teams are able to maneuver and operate a single last cannon on a tripod mount, and this has become the standard method of deploying the man portable form of the last cannon. To accommodate the increased power output, the last cannon's barrel is several times larger in diameter and length. While the last cannon is primarily designed to knock out tanks, it can also be used against single heavily armored foot troopers, where the high energy blast will easily penetrate armor or thick hide. In most cases, however, it is a poor anti-personnel weapon compared to a heavy bolter or autocannon, and commanders should not employ last cannons to target infantry unless no other target presents itself as this contravenes Departmento Munitorum regulations on wasting ammunition. The missile launcher is one of the most common and highly favored heavy weapons in the Imperial arsenal. Like all heavy weapons in the Guard, it is most commonly deployed in anti-tank support squads to engage and destroy enemy armor. Though with frag missiles, the two-man crew can punch holes in mass groups of enemy infantry. The concept behind the missile launcher is universal, and versions of this blessed weapon are produced all over the galaxy. The Cadian pattern carries a missile magazine containing individual self-propelled missiles and can fire a variety of load types. The most usual missile type is the Crack Armor Penetration Missile, specifically engineered to crack open armor and destroy tanks. The Frag Missile, which is designed to explode amongst enemy infantry and scythe down exposed foot troops, is another common load. Other missile types are available, such as smoke missiles, plasma missiles, or anti-plant missiles, but such munitions are either too situational or rare as to be readily discounted. The gunner and loader of a missile launcher must work together to decide on the most appropriate missile load as battle begins, and a loader that serves a gunner for any length of time will soon develop an understanding of what shells to load before the order even comes through. Some enemies of the Imperium have no honor, such as the Tau, and they may use their techno sorcery to deploy countermeasures to incoming missiles. When this is the case, two or more weapon teams should engage an enemy target at one time on a prearranged signal, such as a command, whistle, booby trap, or mine. This is the best method of engagement with an armored vehicle with countermeasures, as it places the most possible rounds on one target at one time, increasing the probability of a kill by overwhelming the enemy technology. As is only appropriate, we will end today's broadcast with a thought of the day, approved by your local Departmento Munitorum officials. There can be no bystanders in the battle for survival. Anyone who will not fight by your side is an enemy you must crush. And so we reach the end of this particular educational broadcast, which has been approved for public consumption by the Departmento Munitorum. Whether you are an Imperial citizen or a soldier in his most divine Astra Militarm, you should now have sufficient knowledge to recognize and operate the weapons of the Imperial Guard. Take heart, noble people of humanity, for as you can see, the Imperium has at its disposal the finest weapons and war gear in the galaxy. Armed with these divine weapons of war, there is no threat, within or without, Xenos or heretic that can possibly threaten the supremacy of humanity. It is our right to rule the galaxy, nay the universe, and with these instruments of destruction, that is almost a certainty.